Just bounce to this. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brandon Clements, and welcome back to another tutorial where today we're going to talk about Cinema 4D and Octane and how to render out some headphones. Uh, so we, we're going to talk about some simple objects, how we can create those, um, and actually use deformers when we're modeling to um, get some really nice curved surfaces out of um, some really, really simple geometry. So hopefully you guys pick up some cool tricks and tips today and of course we'll be looking at how to do another photoreal render so without further ado let's go ahead and jump into Cinema 4D and take it from there sweet okay so here we are and um, what I'm so happy about is this render time uh, so this is 1600 by 1200 and uh, if you saw the other video uh, we did a little bit of optimization and tweaking um, but we'll talk about that more in this video as well, but a minute 20 uh, for this image, which is super cool. So let's take a look at the scene um, and how everything was set up. Uh, e let's see, this here could look kind of intimidating, but I promise it's not. It's actually incredibly easy how I set this up. Um, and that's what I love about cinema is you can create some really, really cool stuff uh, with a lot of the modifiers and a lot of the systems that they already have in place. So, for instance, let's take a look at the headphones. Obviously, I have a symmetry, um, which you can find right here. Symmetry. And it is just mirroring over the Z and the Y, uh, of course, for it's a symmetrical kind of headphone shape. And then we have a subdivision modifier which can be found right here underneath of that we have a group that contains um, kind of the magic here in this little tutorial and it's uh, using these deformers to get an awesome nice curved surface so you don't have to model all this stuff out and not only that uh, it's non-destructive so you can come in and add these deformers at your will which you can find right here and they will affect everything that is inside of the group okay so it affects all of this right here, the headphone shape, which I'll show you here in a little bit, which is so simple. You're um, probably going to kick yourself if you haven't thought about using this method before. I know I I, I felt that way. So, and then I I also used a bunch of lofts um, to actually create these smooth shapes for the earphones or um, the headphones or the you know the cover part, whatever you want to call it. So we have a group there that just has all the lofts, and uh, you can see I collapsed one of them. I turned the stoplight off. Um, and then just collapse it so that I could add some tags to get the chrome piece on. Um, so let's let's go ahead and recreate how we did this. And I'll just turn these off, and you can see this. This is it. This is uh, this is everything. Pretty photo real, huh? Look how great that looks. So uh, it's it's a really simple shape. Um, I started out with just a cylinder and did a couple of extrusions and just went straight up with it and. All the work is being done um, with deformers. Uh, so let's, let's run through my thought process of how I made these deformers, and then uh, I'll show you real quick how, how to model all that stuff out. So uh, we're using, again, the shape that's in the group with the deformer. So we turn these on, and we get the uh, bend. So if we go back into object mode, not polygonal mode, you can see we get the bend of the top part, uh, which can be shown like so. So just moving this into place, um, a great way is to select the object and then hit L, um, as in lion, on the keyboard, and it will activate the uh, the axis. So we can move the axis around and it will actually move the deformer for us into different places. So you can see as I move this up and down, and all this can be animated, which is even cooler, um, but you can see that it folds and uh, creates that kind of gap for the symmetry to connect up with it. So you kind of get this illusion that it's one piece, um, but it's actually two pieces being mirrored over by the symmetry modifier. And then after that, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, I got a top part for the band, but I kind of want the bottom part to bend in slightly as well. So I have another modifier here for that, as you can see here. So those are, that's just position the same way. Um, I actually just, 
pretty much made a duplicate. As you can see, that point one is just a duplicate. I just control clicked and dragged, and then just flipped it over. Um, of course, being in this access mode, I like you working in that mode for modifying the the uh, deformers. So it's kind of bent in a little bit, and then I use the twist, as you can see here, to just point it inward. You know, so I'll turn that on and off again so you can see that. Uh, just so subtle, but of course I can come in and tweak it. So like if a client says, oh, it, you know, that looks cool, but it actually is angled more towards your ear um, to rest that way. So you could, you could kind of twist it any way you'd want. Um, and it will work that way, and it's all very responsive. Uh, but then I was looking at the, the actual profile of it, and I was like, well, it'd be nice if this could actually bend out a little bit more um, or bulge out. <laughs> just so happens we have another uh, deformer called bulge. So if we take a look at that, you can see how it bulges that part of the headphone out. So it allows some more room for you to pull the headphone, um, you know, apart and actually fit onto your head. Um, so cool, yeah. Then then you just it's all working with the sub D modifier, um, formerly known as Hypernerves, and it's all working together well, except for this. <laughs> but it's because it's mirrored and um, just rendering from one angle uh, it gives you a pretty believable profile or silhouette of the um, of the headphones so it's super super simple so let's go ahead and start a new scene and just I'll drop down a cylinder and um, I'll make it kinda smaller something like that we'll point it in the X and then we'll actually just put eight segments and then collapse it by hitting C. And if you hit, um, first of all, let's turn this to lines, but if you hit, I have a shortcut set up for one to be points. If I right click and say optimize, then it will weld um, everything together. Normally this would just be, um, it's cap. So if I undo, undo, you can see that it's just basically a cap and it's detached. So um, using that optimize, it will weld based on a threshold of points on top of each other. So that works really, really well sometimes. And then after that, I just kind of um, blocked out the shape. I just extruded MT. M will bring up the modeling tools, and then T is extrude. So um, bring that up. Use your move tool to scale it in. And to, to actually zero it out, you can do it down here, hitting zero, and now it's perfectly flat, and bring it up. Okay, so we're just working super, super simple um, just to get the form and the silhouette. So MK, I'm going to change this to loop to use my knife tool. Um, another great way is if I know it needs to be this height, I can hit U on the keyboard and then hit B to select the rings. So you can see B, as in boy, is ring selection. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to say connect points and edges. And I can repeat this operation to get an even number of spans across the, um, the earphone shape or the uh, headphone shape, sorry. And then uh, I'll go ahead and hit space bar in polygon mode to um, paint select this. And then I'm going to hit MW for extrude inner. You know, and then you can, you can just kind of keep going with this and you know extruding I'm not I'm not looking at any reference but you guys get the ideas of how I actually got the shape for the beats headphones and stuff um, so yeah you can use that as a shape and then I'm just gonna go ahead and put this into a null so hitting alt G it's now a null so I can start adding all my deformers and by holding shift if I have that null selected I can add let's say the bend modifier for example and uh, you can kind of place it under this and say fit to parent that's a great way of just uh, snapping it into um, position really quick and then we can of course bend this over now uh, I, I, I don't want it to look something like this necessarily so I'll take um, the axis tool and move it up and then you can see I can get a degree of variance of what I need okay so cool stuff you can just keep building on top of that as I said before I copied that over and brought it down 
and then just kind of played with it a little bit. So something like, let me see, we'll flip it over and then bring it down. So something like this and then just change the strength. Okay, and this is just, it's just fun to work like this. And it's smart too because um, there's so many clients that come back, especially if you're just working in a visualization uh, industry and you're just trying to get concepts out and you want to tweak things, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself into um, one specific way of using, you know, tons of polygons and, um, you know, before you know it, you're kind of stuck with that or you have to use some sculpting tools or you have to manipulate more than one vertice at a time. Um, and I know you guys have probably done a lot of pushing and pulling and that stuff is so frustrating. But if you can work in a way um, that's non-destructive, like in, um, in this kind of instance, you can get some really great looking shapes and forms uh, very, very quickly. Okay, so that's that's just kind of a rundown, and you guys can you you guys can totally see how um, this was created. I mean, um, I, it was a lot of tweaking, I'll admit, for sure, to get this to be um, as photo real. Um, well, not as photo; it's not super photo real. The render isn't, but um, to be able to trick you at first glance, uh, a lot of these little kind of nuances here and the extrusions and and things like that the forms need to kind of match each other so you recognize it as a as a beats headphones because this is something that a lot of us have seen friends have um, it's a popular product so you want to be able to at first glance um, no doubt make them believe that it is um, the product that you're trying to visualize so uh, definitely pay attention to all these small intricate details I even did smaller extrusions here on the uh, shape if we actually undo the um, in, unenabled, the actual sub D thing, we can see all of all of the little small extrusions that I made. And since it's like super flat and it's not rounded uh, per se, like I can go ahead and turn those things off and collapse it down. I can easily add more detail into this. If it was like a curved surface uh, that was frozen per se. Uh, now that would be so much harder to go in and actually draw all that detail. It'd be something I'd have to do manually by using the knife tool. Okay, like just going in and drawing, you know, on top of this curved surface, you know, and making making cuts. And that's not fun. Um, no one really likes that. So if you can keep it super straight up and down, where you can just say, you know, I want to add, I want to take this loop here, and I want to make it uh, flat again I can come down here and then maybe add another loop like so and then select that ring and then extrude it out you know you get you get some really awesome feedback and then when you go ahead and you turn everything on again uh, it just it just all kind of works you know um, so doing it that way is is way easier than trying to extrude along the normal and trying to get things looking I, although this is a hideous detail <laughs> ignore that um, you, you get the point you can see where I'm coming from so it, with the lofts too if you haven't worked with lofts before let's do that real quick um, in this in this scene file with this ugly uh, example headphone um, basically what I had done was take um, these circle shapes and of course put them um, into place and let's just hide everything in here just real quick so we can concentrate on on how we can do these lofts so I'm gonna hold alt and I'm gonna say loft um, and from here on out I can just um, I'll turn my axis off to just normal and go into object mode from here on out I can just grab my move tool and hold control and just start making adjustments okay so now I'm in my scale tool I'm gonna hold control again and then I'm gonna go back to my move tool and hold control again and you can see I can move it out in any way and start creating these shapes and the reason I I used uh, lofts is just overall it just it's a it's a NURBS kind of function it's all math based it just looks a lot smoother in the end and uh, of course if you stop it abruptly you're gonna get a really hard edge but if you use your scale tool and say hold control look as I scale that down 
you know we're creating another guy here you can see by the lines that it's this large right here you can get some really cool like soft pillowy looking uh, shapes so um, definitely using these lofts over in this example to get um, the shapes extending from the cover or the uh, the plate here it was so much easier um, and of course it's all non-destructive so I can come in here to the ear cushions and of course I I have multiple um, uh, NURBS curves going and lofting between these shapes but you know it, it doesn't take long for me to find where I'm at in that stack so I got my scale tool out and you can see uh, where it's updating at so I can move it you know it won't take long for me to be able to fix the crease per se okay so there it is and then I can I can just shut it off too so I'm like well that crease is too hard maybe I maybe I don't need a seam there in my visualization so I can just shut those things off it makes it so easy to edit and then if your client changes their mind you can always re-enable those things um, Okay, sweet. So I, I think you guys get the idea of, of how that's how that was actually made. Um, I'm just not going to save this. I'm going to reopen my file again um, so we can talk about some of the shading here that I did in Octane. So um, it's basically a sky object which you can create here in the live viewer window. You can say objects and then you can create any of these Octane um, little handy dandy preset thing. So um, the Octane camera, you click it, it creates the Octane camera with a tag and same with the area light and then they have this awesome targeted area light which I used here and um, it's already got a light target from the beginning, from the get-go. I got two of them right here. So in the scene, if I back away from the camera and I unhide these but with the stop lights, you can see I got a larger light um, it's actually not that large. Uh, everything's to scale. I don't think I mentioned that a lot in my past tutorials, but scale is huge um, when it comes to photorealistic renders because if your scale is right with your headphones and the lights are scaled to close to real world dimensions of what an actual softbox or uh, you know a source would be, then when you go in and actually use your cameras, um, I have like an f-stop at 2.8, and you get a really believable um, photo real look. I, I It just all kind of works together. It, there's really no one thing that's going to help you create photorealistic renders. It's it's a multitude of things um, that you need to be aware of and pay attention to. So I got this kind of backlight. If we check out the uh, the settings here, you know, it's pretty cool and uh, low intensity. And then the one in the front, uh, again, very cool. Uh, a bluish color, what I mean by that, if for some of you who uh, don't know the Kelvin scale. And then um, a higher intensity and it's farther away, so it's producing kind of an overall softer look. It's also larger, just by a bit, maybe. Yeah, you can see just a bit, 60 centimeters, and then, you know, or an average of 40 or so for this guy. And... Um, and then the floor is just a, a normal plane with this floor material, which, um, again, nothing crazy here. The roughness is, is brought up to get some diffuse reflections and then just bringing down the color there um, so that energy is kind of bouncing back out into the scene. Because with white objects, I see this all the time, uh, people will, will ramp this all the way up to 100% white, and there's no such thing as this 100% white in the real world and there's no such thing as 100% black either um, granted if you're talking about something out in space or a vacuum or whatever <laughs> but other than that here on earth and in the real world and what your clients are gonna want there is no such thing as uh, as those 100% whites and blacks because they just overall do not help your scene they kind of um, create this fake look um, first off and the same goes with when you're creating like things that are really red you can see here um, the the saturation uh, is is high um, overall if you look at a lot of their marketing materials um, for these headphones super saturated images and very contrasted so um, the reason why I have saturation is 80% it was just kind of a creative thing but usually I don't go above 
uh, 70 or I don't go above like 65 because things in the real world really aren't that saturated. And I think it gives away renders from the get go. Um, now, of course, there's a difference between a photo and a difference between a film look or a grade, you know, you see a lot of these nice photo real images and you're like, Oh, well these look real. Um, but it's treated as if it was filmed from a camera that an editor would take into post and then grade in something like Da Vinci. You know, it has an overall kind of look. It's all graded a certain way. So think about that too, um, when you're creating your images and if you're going into post plan your attack that way and, um, specular, I lowered it because it was picking up a lot of um, reflection off of the environment so um, lowering that in, in the vibrance here um, helps a lot and then roughness it's it's very reflective just because um, for the sake of being reflective for the render now I probably wouldn't use uh, there's really not going to be a surface that's that smooth in the real world to where I would have this number down but it was an artistic choice so um, let's let's go ahead and fire up that live viewer and take a look at what we're um, doing here. So let's see, it looks like I got it down here and we'll s send everything off to Octane. And I'm actually gonna pause this real quick and I'm gonna go into my Octane settings. And I'm going to keep my priority at low uh, just because I'm screen capping all this stuff at the same time. Okay. So I don't want to be too brutal on my graphics cards. And um, it looks like my textures aren't popping in. So let's go ahead and see what is up there. Reload. Okay. So... Um, okay, so it's loading the HDR again. Sorry about that. Go and find the HDR. Um, let's see. Here we go. All right, and of course I'll leave a link to uh, Maxime's stuff. Maxime Raz, he did some awesome HDRs and I've used his stuff in prior tutorials. So thanks again for all the free stuff. It's great. Um, I use it a lot. So, and also check out his packs for sale because there's some really, really interesting stuff in there as well. Um, and then a lot of this stuff is plastic in this render. So it's pretty easy to create. Um, you, you saw how I actually did the other stuff. So this is just the same as that first material. Um, although it's very blurry reflections and um, the index of refraction is usually around 1.6 for plastic. I keep it in that ballpark range and uh, tweak for artistic reasons. So it's a good place to start. Um, the aluminum is again, like the uh, diffuse is very dark. Okay. So hardly any diffuse and we're pumping all of that back into our reflection amount. Okay. So you can see I've tinted it just a little bit and then our roughness is um, brought down so it's pretty it's pretty clear now if I bump this up you can see it gets more blurry more diffuse and as I bring this down you can see a, a very chrome like okay so it's it's somewhere in the middle somewhere uh, where I feel like it's blurry enough but you can still see some types of detail in some forms in, in that reflection and then the index of course is at three it's higher because it is um, it is a metal so it's very reflective all over the chrome um, is similar for in the in the index of refraction and again very super sharp reflections and um, diffuse hardly any and then I use something pretty cool for the um, for the ear parts let's see if we actually look at the cushions here uh, you can see in this render um, it's very bumpy and something that you'll notice in octane something that I noticed is when you actually have a material that's bumpy. Let's see, we'll look at the actual. Uh, under here, under normal, 
when it's something bumpy like that uh, with this leather texture, for some reason my textures aren't loading in, so just real quick, let me point it back. So something that is bumpy like this in Octane, uh, you kind of lose like the sharper reflections. And um, it's true, in the real world what creates blurry reflections is a bumpy surface. Um, but for my artistic reasons, as I've said throughout this video, I wanted to have kind of like a plastic coating over top of that leather, you know, it's something that would like tear away um, from these headphones in the real world. So I used a um, Octane Mix material. So I created a, um, a foam type of material. I just copied what I already had, and then I copied my plastic, and I tweaked the roughness a little bit. And then pumped those guys into the foam and the plastic here and started to tweak how they actually show up within the render. So if, if I go up, you can see this gets very glossy and it gets this kind of wet look to it um, because the plastic is taking over in the render. But if I bump it down to where it was, you kind of get the, uh, the softness of the diffuse reflections, but you get a little bit of highlights and a little bit of reflections from that plastic that I had copied over and named Mix Plastic. So Mix Materials are awesome inside of Octane. Um, you can do some really great things, um, especially with metals, and we'll, we'll take a look at those in some other tutorials to come. I uh, have a lot of great things planned for that. Let's take a look at some of our settings here. Uh, we'll go to the live viewer, or we'll just open our settings. And I talked about we'd take a look at some of the optimization stuff that I'd done. Um, uh, we had spoke about it a little bit before, but um, it's good to just refresh and take a look at this. Uh, 2048, again, kind of a recommended sampling rate. Um, diffuse depth of 4. I just kind of ramped it up from zero to notice any change, and I stopped at four because I didn't see any difference between four and five, really, um, which was similar to the interior that I'd done before. Um, the Caustic Blur, 0.2, works really well for this scene, and then the GI clamp around 0.7 or 0.8. That seems to be normal. And, of course, zero for the specular depth because I have absolutely zero refractive materials in this scene. Um, and everything's pretty much at default from from that s standpoint. Uh, I didn't render out any passes for anything because uh, that's kind of a, its own separate tutorial, and we could take a look at that uh, doing more post work with all these render passes in the future, which would be great. And um, I think that pretty much wraps up this tutorial of how I created these headphones. Now. Um, we didn't take a look at the camera tag, and well, let's do that real quick. Uh, the f-stop 2.8, like I mentioned before, helps a lot in terms of um, if this was really a lens that could get down to 2.8, um, like a nice uh, macro type of lens. It, you would kind of get a shot similar to this in the real world. And, of course, the focal depth. Uh, again, if you hold control and middle click on the uh, live preview, you can switch your different focal points in and out. So you can see here now this is in, fo in focus, and you can see that this was changing as I was clicking. Um, and then I and then I like to use this aperture edge. You can see at one, um, it still has a good look to it, uh, but piping it up to two, you get some really cool bokeh effects. Uh, so a little artistic choice there on the HDR uh, with a lot of these high values that are p appearing in the render. Um, so just something that's kind of cool to use. I use that from time to time. And then I uh, didn't do anything with the camera uh, imager or the post-processing. Um, so that pretty much wraps it up for uh, this tutorial. Again, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll try to get to them the best I can and answer those. Um, leave, this, leave a like for this video <laughs> if you liked it. Um, if you didn't, uh, sorry. <laughs> Let me know why in the comments below. And then check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of our social media hooks. Um, Give us a shout out there as well. Thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care.